Hi, I'm Amber Herring and this is the Herring's Art String Art tutorial. I've laid out all the materials that are provided as well as needed. Uh, you need the design, the piece of wood, your instructions, you don't know pliers, your nails, your hammer, string color of choice, an awl, which is optional, I'll show that to you in a minute, scotch tape, tweezers, a lighter, and some scissors. We are going to start nailing our design. As you can see, I've already taped the design to our wood, and I'm going to show you the two different ways. So you can get the needle nose pliers and the nails, and then hammer them directly into the wood, or you can use the awl, which is my personal preference, and pre-make holes, and then nail directly into that, and I'll show you the difference. So we're going to open up our nails, and you're just going to place them in the, in the pliers and place them into the hole and then get your hammer and just nail it until it is securely in the wood. Don't worry if it's not too straight or if it's angled or you don't know the height you can adjust it as you go and then you just continue to move around the the board with this until you have every nail in place. So as you can see these nails are not straight they're not equal height as well so you can lightly tap them you can pull on the nails and adjust them as well but you also want to make sure they're like really secure in the wood and the as same height as you possibly can so what i'll do is i'll go ahead and nail all the way over this way and then i'll show you how to do the the next step using the awl So as you can see, I nailed in all of these things, and like I said, if it's the same height, crooked, or whatever, you can adjust it as you go. Just kind of like fix them. That one needs to be ha hammered in a little bit more. And once you finish nailing the whole design, you can go back and adjust them. That's what I typically like to do. So that was putting in the nails into the pliers, but I, like I said, I personally preference to use the awl. So let me go and show you how that technique works as well. So with the awl, you'll just hold it over one of the holes on the design, and then you just whack it with a hammer, and then keep doing that for every hole. I like to do this because it's so much easier to place the nails, because the nails have a hole to fall into rather than just being the flat wood. So. You just hold the awl over the dots, give it a good hit, and it'll create a good divot. Using the awl, using the awl, as you'll be able to see when I take off the design, it creates holes and you know so the nails can go into. Whereas when you do this, you're likely to get pieces of paper stuck underneath the nails. When you remove the design on this, it won't have any paper in the holes and it's easier to nail and you don't even have to tweeze the little bits of paper out, which is great and very helpful with time. So let me go and show you. So I went ahead and used the awl all the way around this edge because like I said, it is easier for me and I do personally prefer it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to unpeel my design from the wood. I'm going to untake off the scotch tape. I had it taped on all four edges to keep it securely in place and I'll go ahead and show you how different using the awl versus just the pliers does make on the wood. So once you untape your design you can just lift it up easily from the wood. So as you can see on this side it came off perfectly whereas where these nails are that's where I'm gonna have the issues see how that it gets stuck you then you can take off more time to take this off as you can see there's a little piece of paper there and that's when I'll get my tweezers and pinch it off sometimes you'll get lucky and there's not a whole lot of paper as you can see there's some right here on this corner 
and it really just is so time consuming to have to sit and take off all this paper whereas when you don't get any of that but just the all okay so now that you have your design taken off I'm gonna go ahead and finish nailing in the design as I was saying so you just get the the nails and now that you have holes and you know divots you could just very easily just almost drop the nail into it and just hold it in place and this will help your nails become so much straighter so much um, more in place just because it, you have an actual guideline and you're not just nailing directly just onto the wood which you know it could slip as you're trying to nail but when you have already holes for it to just fall straight into it does help tremendously in my opinion so I'm gonna go ahead and finish nailing in this whole design and then I'll go and show you how to string it now that we've nailed in the whole design now you'll straighten out any discrepancies between the nails you could use your fingers you could use the pliers I've already pretty much fixed any that were messed up but Typically, you would just get the pliers, you know, like adjust the angles, adjust the height, hammer them in further, whichever you need to do to make them all as straight and the same height as possible. So now I'm going to go and show you how to string it. So you're going to get your string color of choice. I'm using this beautiful jade blue. And I'm going to start it off on one corner or edge. It doesn't necessarily have to be a corner. Because uh, I know some of my designs don't necessarily have a corner, they just have a starting point. With this, you're going to tie off three knots. I like to do three just because it help, keeps it more secure. And once you have all three knots, you're going to go ahead and pull it very tight. Make sure it's tight. Keep it up at the top of the nail. You're going to go ahead and trim off the tail with a pair of scissors and then burn off the tail with a lighter. You want to be careful with doing this so you make sure you don't burn the actual string in the design and uh, unravel the piece. So first I'm going to show you how to do an outline and then I'm going to go through and show you how to fill in the entire piece. But with the outline you're going to want to weave the string in and around the nails. So let me kind of show you what I mean by that. So you, since you start here, you're going to weave going in, out, in, out, going like this, and then until you go all the way around the border. Right here, we're going to be changing directions, going from left to right instead of from bottom to top. And so when you change directions or after every few nails, I like to wrap the string completely around the nail rather than just a halfway around it. That does help you keep more secure. And then you just continue to weave your string back and forth through the thing. And like I said, once you change directions, now we're going top to bottom. You wrap the string completely around, oh my goodness, completely around the nail. And then until you go all the way around the design. As you can see, this has fallen off this nail several times. That is a very good example of showing you how keeping the nail and the strings very tight is important because if you let any of the slack go while you're stringing, it is likely to unravel and fall apart. And so that is, you know, time consuming if you keep making those mistakes. And also with the smaller nail heads, it is harder to string. But let's see. So you'll continue. And then right here. You will go all the way around it again because you change directions until you get all the way back up to the front of the design. And with more complicated designs that aren't just a square, you will just continue and go all the way around those as well, just the same. So now that we are back at the starting point, you can see how I did it on this side of the nail, then over here, then on this side, and then back. So now you're going to do the opposite side of the nail until you go all the way around both sides of each nail. As you can see here, it's starting to form kind of like a figure eight. And that's the image you want. And so you're just going to keep going in that pattern all the way around the design, doing little mini figure eights on both sides until you get all the way back 
across on your design. If I can get this to work. There we go. And sometimes I like to rotate the wood too because it helps me just with my angles and so my hands aren't feeling like I'm stringing backwards. And once I'm back at the starting point, what I'll do from here is I'll rotate the string around the nails on the outside edge only. So this right here is the outside edge, and then of course this right here is the inside edge. So with this, now that I'm over here, I'm going to rotate it around the nail again, and then just do circles. So you're just going to do little circles like or loops going along the outside edge. Oh, it unraveled. You want to make sure and keep an eye on your string. Make sure it doesn't unravel as well. So you're going to keep going around the edge in this outside pattern. And just do a loop on every nail. And again, when you change directions or after every few nails, if you need to, pull the string completely around a nail and keep it tight. So I'm going to go ahead and rotate the wood so I can have a better angle at it because it does keep falling off. And just as you can see, string art is very tedious. It's not for the faint of heart. But it is very fun and it is very interesting to do and once you have a finished piece it does look very beautiful and the sense of completion goes with it and I really enjoy it. I know it's very th therapeutic for me but I hope you enjoy doing string art as well. So you're just going to go ahead and go all the way around this square. Nail by nail. And once you're back at the starting point, you can even go kind of like backwards around the nail. Let me see if I can show you. And then you're just going to do the same loops going all the way across on the inside. So you're going to continue to just loop it over the nails on the inside. Oh, this is not wanting to stay. Okay, I'm just going to go ahead and pull it up to here. So whenever you, how you can see that this is more of a completed border. So if you're going to go ahead and do that all the way around, and then once you bring it off, you just tie it off to the same nail and then cut off the string and bring the edge like you did when you first started. And that'll give you a very nice border. So let me go ahead and finish that real quick and then I'll show you. Now that I've done the inside layer of the whole design, I'm going to show you how to cut off the string as well. So you just go ahead and cut off your string and then tie about three knots again as well. So just make sure you're pulling tight with each knot, just so it doesn't come loose. And after the third knot, you're just going to go ahead and cut off the tail and then burn the edge. Here's where you want to make sure you're extra cautious not to burn off the actual design. So you just barely burn the edge and as it gets close to the strain, kind of put it out just a little bit. And now you have a string art outline and this looks great on letters shapes any design really that you just wanted like a simple outline instead of a full image but I'll go ahead and show you how to go from an outline to a full image and so I'll go and show you the how to string art a full image now so now I'm going to show you how to fill in the design you're going to start it off the same way as you did the outline, you're going to find a corner or an edge and do three knots. 
And then with this, you're going to go diagonally across the design rather than just around it. And if you see my instructions, like I say, there's no real rhyme or reason to this. You just kind of like string it to the best of your abilities and fill in any areas that would need it. But I like to start off going in the same directions until I'm trying to actually fill in smaller spaces. If you look at my dinosaur pattern when you're like filling in like the little heads and stuff, obviously you'll just go and fill in those as best as you can. Whereas a square, it's pretty simple and the angles are very, sim very symmetrical. And so you can just do this uh, easier than you would be able to do, like for example, the dinosaur. I'm gonna go and rotate my, my wood so you can go ahead and see it. And with this, so you're just gonna kind of weave it back and forth across the design like this. So you're gonna weave your nail your string around your nails, sorry, until you go all the way across the design. So with this, you're just gonna keep going zigzag. And again, like with the outline, you wanna make sure your string is very, very tight. And just keep looping it back and forth, zigzagging it through the design. Once you're over here, you're going to change directions. So like I mentioned before, you're going to do a full loop around it. I can rotate the wood. And now I'm choosing to go a different direction. So I can go here and then back up. And as you can see, that's starting to give you a crisscross pattern all the way across the design. And so you'll go ahead and keep doing this over the design, change directions. I usually go about six different directions on one piece, then depending on how full I want the look. Sometimes I'll do many more layers or directions just depending on how full I want it to look but as you can see with just two it's already starting to fill in quite nicely and so you just want to continue stringing it in in a different direction let's see and once you get off to the edge tie it all the way around again and so now you've gone diagonal you can even just go straight up loop it around that nail and you just want to go about several different directions. I usually do, like I said, about six. So two diagonal, two up and down, two sideways, just to give it, you know, more full look. And as you can see, the string is covering in all those white spaces. And so the more directions and the more layers you go, the fuller your image will look. And so with that, and then here you can just go sideways going down the other way so now we're going all the way across the design this way but typically when you want to do a more full look you'll do it all over the place with this I am doing an actual pattern keeping it the same direction all the way across but typically you won't need to do that you can just string it almost wildly to get it more full. So if I wanted to actually fill this in and make it completely full, it would take me quite a while to do it going this method. So what I mean by no rhyme or reason, you can literally just hook it almost anywhere, just drag it big across, do bigger motions with it, and then it doesn't have to be the same little routine of back and forth, back and forth. You could take it this way, all the way across, and literally just change your direction every second or so, and just keep going all the way across the wood until you feel like all the spaces underneath are as filled as you want them to be. And if you want it to be completely solid, you're going to have to go 
various directions, various times, various reasons, just to fill it all in. But if you just wanted like an actual simple thing, then you would keep going the same, try and keep it the same direction as best as you can, just so the string does flow better. But with my finished pieces, I go all over the place. And so it's, here's like a random angle here, just because I'm trying to like fill in some of these white spaces. And you can kind of like see where your string is. So if you want to fill in this little corner right here, you can like figure out where your string needs to be. So if here it's missing it. Okay, so here, no, so here, we kind of bring it around. Oh, hold on. You would kind of bring it around and then cover it, go around, and then see if you go a different direction, it fills in that spot a little better. And you could do that for the entire design. I'm gonna go ahead and stop here just because I can be stringing this forever until I get it as full as I would like it to be. But just for this example, I did wanna show you that changing directions and just kind of having fun and making it your own creation is what's really unique about it. And so with this, once you get off to an edge, you're going to go ahead and finish it the way you did with the outline. And you're going to go ahead and tie it off in the three knots. And do that as well. And then you're going to cut it and burn off the edge and just, you know, give it that finished look. With this, if you're wanting to, you could have strung it wildly and then went and continued to do the outline. So say you came back to this nail where I tied it off, you would have weaved your design, your string back through the edges like you did on the outline, move it all the way around, do both sides, do the figure eights, and then loop it on the outside and even on the inside if you choose to to give it more of a defined edge. As you can see, this piece, it does not have like an actual edge to it. If you're wanting to add one to give it a more finished look, you're definitely able to do that. Just once you bring your string down to a certain nail, once you're done stringing out the whole design, like I said, just go ahead and design the string, like weave it through like you did on the outline. If you have any questions, please call or message and let me know and I would love to see your finished products so if you could please tag me in those on Facebook or uh, Instagram or any other of my marketing places if you see that you've finished one I would love to see your finished products or pictures of you or your children making them so thank you for shopping with Herring's Heart and I definitely appreciate it